Hello and welcome to another, another episode of the LBV podcast. I'm delighted to say today we have Rafe Rovers club captain Kyle Benedictus on. How are you doing, mate? Hi, Louis. How are you doing, mate? Aye, no bad. Just uh, got into stay even now, so got training tonight, but I thought I'd give you a bit of my time first. Thank you, thank you. Uh, first question, Kyle. Um, how have you dealt with lockdown overall? Yeah, obviously it's been tough. Um, I think it's been tough for everyone. Um, I think as football players, we've probably had the better end of the stick because we've been able to train um, still. Um, obviously, it's still tough, but I think most of the boys have dealt with it quite well here. Um, but as I say, it seems to be the end's near, so as I say, hopefully we can get things back to normal as soon as possible. Hopefully. Right, we'll start with the very beginning. Um, how did you first get into playing football? I started quite late. I was maybe... 15 when I got when I got scouted. Um I used to play in the park and my mates and that and through school I got an opportunity kinda obviously we say hanging around with the wrong people and that the school gave us a, a wee opportunity to go and do a thing at Dens Park, which was called Kick a Kick Off. Um, it was like a program where you gotta go and play football in the afternoon, but in the morning they got to obviously do your maths, English, whatever you had to do at school. So I kinda went through that in Liverpool. Um had one as well, uh, Liverpool kick a kick off in Hamilton. So every year we would go down to Liverpool and we would play Liverpool's team home and away, and then the same with Hamilton. And you used to always get, always get scouts and that. And I just got one of the personal ones at Chai Wilson, and he run it and he got a call from one of the scouts saying, Oh, can we take Kevin to train? So from there, um, kind of just went to train Dundee. And I think after my first or second session, they wanted to sign us right away. So that was pretty much it. So probably old Charlie um, quite a bit. Um, considering I probably wasn't actually thinking about football at the time. Eh? Um, it was just any you know, things that popped up and you know, I'm now still. As you said, you signed for them in 2008. How much of an honour was it to sign for a club like Dundee? Yeah, of course, as I say, um, even just to get the skill picked from any team at that, that age, also, it doesn't usually happen that age, you get picked up that late. Um, and she's got the call and to go on training, I was obviously delighted to go and just see what it was about. And then um, I think it was Chris Smith, he was the manager at Dundee, I think it was under 17s. Um, he offered us a contract and I said yes right away. Um, I didn't know what to expect, didn't know what was going to happen. And I think maybe even a year later, that's when even underneath a year I was in the first team. You made your debut in the November of that year. Um, talk me through your emotions on that day. Yeah, I remember, I think it was, maybe it must have been the Friday before, and the manager, Jotty Scott, um, obviously it was going through the club, there was a lot of injuries at the time, and I didn't, I didn't even know anything about the game. I wasn't even thinking about the first team game, I was just thinking about usual go to clean players, but bits on the Friday, doing my job is what we had to do, and Friday the manager said, look, you're going to be in the squad. Um, so I thought, okay, big step already. Um, told my family and that family were buzzing. Well, some of them weren't because they knew he was an 80 fan. Um, <laughs> so I kind of had to keep that on quiet for a few years. Um, but then I just went into the game. And as you say before, the, the team sheet, he just said my name. And I was thinking, oh. So it was kind of, I think, the nerves and that just hit right there. Eh? I was thinking, oh my God, I'm playing here. Eh? But as I say, once you get on the pitch, it's different. Eh? I, I, I don't care what like, age you are. And I'm sure once you get on the pitch, you forget about things. Eh? The nerves are before you go on the pitch. And as soon as you step on it, it's... You can just do what you need to do. Was there any coaches or players that really helped you develop as a player in your early stages at Dundee? Well, I think Jockey, my manager, he was really good with us. Eh? Um, I think he was very young as well when he got made his debut. I'm sure, I'm not too sure about now, but I'm sure I was like second youngest to play a first team game at Dundee. And I think Jockey Scott was number one at the time. Um, also, I think obviously there's players like Craig White and that have obviously been younger now as well. But at that point, so he kind of helped us through a lot. Um, there was obviously experienced players. Um, Big Rod Douglas was there. Um, Jim Lachlan. So th th there was a lot, of, a lot of help from experienced guys in that. But as I say, I think when you're, when you're that age, it's you can take as much you, like advice as you can. Eh? But I think it's just really about yourself and just try and do the best for you, best for your family. And that's all I've tried to do. And as I say, I managed to get a few games at such a young age, and I also think it's helped us today. A player who was around about the same age as you at, at Dens was Lee Griffiths. Um, how important was he to that team? And could you tell he was going to go as far as he has in his career? Yeah, I think obviously 
as soon as he came to the club, eh, I think there was always a high expectation on him just when he was at Livingston that the goals he scored. Um, I think when he came to the club, we were quite close, eh, but actually he was probably one of the closest people I was with. Um, obviously, after training, that would go and do stuff together and go for food, blah, 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 go and play a bit of golf or whatever it was. Um, so we kind of got quite close now, but I think he, he knew right away his fashion ability. I think a lot of people think from off, what, what he's like off the park and that, but obviously he's, he's a great lad. And as I say, I think he showed by his career how good he is. And obviously the goals he scored for Scotland, he's made a good career for himself. One manager that you've been with at both Dundee and Rafe Rovers was Barry Smith. Um, how important has he been to your career? Yeah, he's been great. Um, I think... He's probably one of the closest managers I've had. Um, I think even I had him at Dundee. Um, and obviously when Paul Hartley came in, uh, things weren't uh, going well. Um, for, well, no, not going well, but as I say, I wasn't uh, getting, really getting a look in um, after we won the championship. So I ran Barry and he took us to Alloa as well. So I've kind of had him at three different clubs and he's always he's always been there for us, like on and off the park. Any issues I've had off the park, he was always always willing to take the phone, he would help us in any way possible. So I probably own a lot um, in football as well. And as I say, he's, he's a great man, knows the game quite well. I think also him and Brad Douglas are quite close as well. So both of them together also try to give as much advice as possible. And it's probably helped us. And now I'm getting older now, kind of kind of realise what to do for the game. As you said, you got promotion uh, in the 2011-12 season under Barry Smith uh, after finishing second. Was there a bit of uncertainty about what would happen with the, you know, the Rangers situation, or when did the players find out about promotion? Yeah, well, we were we were in pre-season. Also, we, we kind of knew like like speculation that there was maybe a chance um, we also would have got promoted. But um, I think at that point we were obviously still prepared for the championship. We were, we'd done all our pre-season and that, and I think obviously by the manager he signed the players for the championship, and I think it was a, a week before the start of the season. We got totally going to be in the SPL, so I had like one week, one week to prepare for. I think it was, who was it? She was Kilmarnock away. I would really know it was Kilmarnock away for the first game. As you say, when she, it's diff, also it's difficult dealing because we were dealing with a team that's going to try and win the championship, not to SPL. So I think obviously it probably took a lot of by just just at that moment in time knowing what he was going to deal with. And I think as you say, that season we ended up getting relegated, but as you say, under the circumstances of what happened. Um, I think we gave it a, a right good go and as you say, I think I sure I played 25 odd games or something in the SPL so it was a lot of good experience for me. Um, so I really enjoyed that season as well, you know, probably didn't go the way I wanted. As you said, it was a great experience for you but sadly relegation followed after that. The next season though was an exciting one for you. You came into the last day of the season with a helicopter Saturday with you and Hamilton. You started the decisive game against Dumbarton. Uh, where you and your teammates clinched the title. Talk me through the celebrations that followed and the, the nerves on that day. Yeah, I think also, I think probably that was the most nervous ever being in the game. Um, I can't it must be like maybe 23, 22, 23. And I'm sure Ian Davidson, who's at, he's been at Rafe now, he was suspended for the last game of the season. Um, so obviously Paul Hartley came in. I was playing, I think I played maybe like 18, 19 games that season. Um, but obviously I wasn't playing maybe four or five games out, but then Davo got suspended. And Paul Hartley also came in and said, look, you're going, like, obviously you're going to need a player. And I was like, well, can't ask for a better game than that to play in it. Um, chance to win the league in that. And I remember going out that, that day and I think it was like, it was a sellout. It was like 10,500 or something. It was a sellout. And just I remember my face like chalk white and that going out and that. And it was just like, just trying to please just win this game. Um, to be fair, we went 2-0 up. Um, and then shoot at half time. Um, a couple of boys were obviously saying, like what's happened with Hamilton? Like what, what's the score with Hamilton? And I'm sure somebody said it was like five or six one. And we were like, ah, oh, no way, it can't be five or six one. That, that doesn't happen. So we came back out and obviously Dumbarton scored, made it really tight. Um, I think Big Kyle Leathern, I think if you've not seen it, like um, you need to see it back. The save he made in like ninety second minute for a header, right. finger tips, probably one of the best saves I've been involved in. I've seen it live, and once that final whistle went, it was a sigh of relief and celebrations after. There was like pitch invasion. I think we that night or I think it's Saturday, Sunday, Monday, where we were just <laughs> enjoying as much as we could. And then Tuesday, we all went to Ibiza and that. So it was it was unbelievable. And I think on a Saturday night, we all shared, shared it with our families. Sunday, we all met up and obviously had a drink, done what we have done. And then on the Tuesday, obviously, the club put, took with to Ibiza. So it was 
it was a great week, a week uh, probably in the best weeks of my life. And probably st- I still, we've still got a group chat now um, on WhatsApp. Every player that was in the team, so we're still getting in touch quite a bit. And as I say, I'll, probably, I'll never forget the memories. Davo told me to mention your Ibiza trip, so I'm glad you mentioned. Right, <laughs> uh, things are things I'm going to keep to myself. I think. <laughs> Uh, so then the following season you went on loan to Aloha and um, what was the reasoning behind that? Yeah as I say obviously I think uh, I mentioned obviously Paul Hartley said about um, playing that um, last game of the season um, there was talks of a contract before also after that day happened um, about getting a new deal and that I was speaking to him and that but also it came to the summer I still had a year contract left and he obviously phoned us and says look you're going to be going to be like fifth fifth choice set of half and looking to bring him in team and that and I was like well that's fine, eh? And um, he says you can come in obviously pre season, be a pre season. I probably think, I think Michelle went to um, Austria. I uh, we went to Austria, um, obviously, on the new signings and stuff. And actually, I felt I'd done quite well. Um, it was probably the best fitness I've had. That was Tam Ritchie, also gave me Paul Hartley, and he's, he was really, really up on his fitness. And you got every single person player on that team fit as a good. But I think I went back, I think I played the League Cup game against Peterhead. And then after that, it was just like, no playing, no in the squad and that. And also at that age and that, you're not really want to be sitting in a stand every weekend. So I was meant to be going out on loan um, to Airdrie. Kind of was, that, that, that deal was meant to happen, but I, I never knew at that point, if you went back in January, um, you could always play for two teams. So obviously I already played for Dundee that season. If I played for Airdrie, I'd only need to play for two clubs. And obviously Airdrie were league one, no disrespect to Airdrie. Also I just came from a championship, obviously a winning team. I didn't really want to go down to league one. Um, so as I would say, I phoned Barry, or also Al, and he said, "Listen, I'll take you here." And at that point, it was just the right thing to do. It was just, as I said, I didn't want to leave. Obviously, I wanted to stay and fight for my, my place in that. But there was too many players in that, and obviously, still going back to the championship. I knew what it was about. I wanted, obviously I knew Barry quite well, and as you say, Al, it was a it was a really good, a really good club. I was very surprised when I went there how good a club it was. Um, being for part time, everything was done for you. You got your kit washed. Um, all your like, you had your Red Bull, your Lucas Ed Water, just any type of food you want. The kit man there was amazing for the, the team. And I think a couple of weeks ago we played them, and he was still there now. So to say, I, I wish all the best for Alba. I also hope, hope to stay up in the league we're in just now as well because it's a good club and it really deserves it. So in the summer of the 2015, you made your move to Fife and the Rafe Rovers. Uh, how did the move to Rafe Rovers come about? Well, I think obviously it was after the, the loan spell at Alwa ended, obviously I knew I wouldn't be getting a contract on D. Um, obviously speaking to my agent and also what you do. Um, there was a chance I could, had a chance for me to go like second division in Holland, um, had a chance to go to Sweden. Um, but my son was born born that pre-season. So it was kind of like, it was either go there and miss it his first couple of years or try and stay here and obviously try and stay in Scotland. So I kind of... Maybe the decision I wanted to stay here. And Ryan McCord used to play at um, Aloe with. He got signed for Ray McKinnon maybe about two weeks before me. And he, and then Ryan got in touch and said, oh, uh, Ray wants to meet you. So I met uh, Ray in the Hilton Dundee. And first thing he said to us was he was like, uh, I'm not really sure about your football, but Bob, uh, Ryan says you'll be good in the dressing room. So I want to sign you. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's fine. Fair enough. Eh? <laughs> so uh, I spoke to him eh, and had a good conversation about what you want to do with Rafe and that and I heard there was a good club before. Obviously Davo was there before when he came to Dundee. He thought it was a bit obviously Rafe and that it would be a good club and that so I just gave it a go and as you say it's been there ever since. As you said uh, Davo made the tr- transition as well from Dundee to Rafe Rovers. Um, he's been with you most of your career really. Um, how, is inf- how influential has Davo been for your career in the whole? Yeah, he's been great. I think that's um, I think seven years or something I've, I've known him for now. And when he came at Dundee and that, um, he was brought, as you say, he's been he's been at Sunderland and that as well. He's he's seen it all and I think he's he's up there. I think he's in the top five all time appearances for Riff. Um, so it just shows you about the experience he has. He's probably one of my, my best mates like off the park as well. Now um, he got married in uh, in December just past there and he was in one of the best man. So just shows you how close I've actually got got with him and. He says he's a great lad and he's got a lot of experience on the pitch and he's, as you say, he's still playing football at 37 year old. Not a lot of people can say that and he's still playing at championship level. So just shows you how well he takes care of himself and just say I can, I've learned a lot from him and he says I'll hopefully be here next year as well. Yeah, a fairly successful first season at Ray Flowers, getting the playoffs under Ray McKinnon with just Nari losing it to Hibs. 
the team went into the playoffs in very good form. Did you and the boys believe you had a good chance of getting far in the playoffs? Yeah, I think that season. Um, I think what a good what, what a good start, steady start. Obviously, we were in the, I think in the back of our minds, obviously the teams that were in the league, there were high end teams in the league. You think maybe you can maybe sneak into that fourth spot. Um, but I think it was Hibs, um, I can't remember Rangers or Hearts, and then Falkirk. It was something, something I can't remember who it was. Um, but we thought we could maybe sneak into that fourth place. And I think started off well. I think during Christmas time was a bad spell for us. Um, and I think we made a couple of giant signings, signings like Louis Longridge, Aidan Conway, Ryan Hardy, um, and signed players like that. And I think we went on like a 17 game unbeaten runner towards the end of the season. And I think you, know, you can't be any more confident than that. Going 17 games unbeaten in, in the league and that, and we were winning games every week. And it came to obviously the first leg <clears throat> against Hibs, we won it here. Um, Harry Paniatu scored a header. He's on one for Leicester, another good signing. And also we're confident now, but I just think Hibs came at the block. And the, the second leg, I think they scored two goals, maybe the first 15 minutes. Probably took, just took the stuff out when it was just like a wee shock to the system. But we had chances that game as well. Uh, maybe the last 20 minutes, I remember we had a couple of chances and we just couldn't have scored that goal. But all in all, it was a successful season. I think also by, you know, Ray, he ended up going to Dunyan Ed. Um, so it just shows you how well we done as a team for him to get that move. And it was a really enjoyable season. Your second season at Rufro was a bit of a downer one. Uh, Gary Locke came in and then John Hughes came in uh, early, later in the season. Relegation for the playoffs that season. What do you think? Was, can you pinpoint something that went wrong that season for the club? Um, probably a, a, you could see a lot of things there. I think, obviously, the start of the season might have done well. I think when, like, the first month we were top of the league and everybody was like, obviously, for the league, Season before, most boys were kept on um, to this season, so we had the the confidence again. And then just slowly but surely, just decided to slip away. And I think in January, I think Louis Vaughan got put on loan at Dumbarton, um, and I've said that to this day. I, I kind of believe that, like that. I think if that didn't happen, we wouldn't have been relegated there because he was fit, probably fit as he was being at that point. Um, always said that it was a baffling decision for, from whoever made it. Didn't let him go away because he was such a quality player and he's still got that quality now. And I think obviously when John Hughes came in, I think he tried to play maybe a bit too much football. What we're used to, I think he tried to maybe get with it, like play for the back and that. And obviously what he was used to, I just think with that moment left in the season, there wasn't a, there wasn't enough time to put his authority in what he wanted to do. I think home games were actually done well. I don't think we lost under John Hughes at home. Eh? Um, I don't think we lost a game when. We were playing at home, but away games, we just got beat every weekend. It was just like, we couldn't get that little point, point we could, because I think at the end of, I think three teams finished on 37 points eh, in, in the last game of the season. And I think it was us, it, we also in the playoff spot just because of goal difference. And I think Hibs had to play, I think Hibs were playing the St. Mum and the game drew one all, and we had Hibs, to, like, we needed Hibs to win, and we won the last day of the season. Eh? And we just thought even before the game, like, surely Hibs will beat St. Mum at home. It just didn't work out. And as you say, I think the playoffs, I think even like the breaking game and that, I just think things weren't the right at the club. Eh? Um, even personally, I got I got all me John Hughes and that. I think he was he was good with me and that. He was a, he was a good he was a good good manager. But I, I never played even a position once since he was here. I was playing left back and right back and that. I just think things just weren't the, weren't the working out. And obviously, what happened, it was probably the lowest point in my career. Um, and I always said I would be here until I managed to get that club back up to the championship. And also, it's happened this year. So, League One followed. Uh, Barry Smith came into the club. Um, did you believe he was the man to lead the club back to the championship? Yeah, also I knew him for Dundee and obviously what he had done in the uh, administration season to go, I think, over when we were at Dundee and that and obviously the club and administration and we got the doctor all the points. I think he, with the, the, the smallest squad he put, I think we had a squad like maybe 14 players and we had, that was like the last six months of the season we had to go through that and he was a leader at all and he, he managed to Lead the, lead the squad and I think we ended up finishing fifth or something so I kind of knew he had a winning mentality about him I think as a player he had a winning mentality and he, he had he had also had the knowledge in the game experience and I think personally I thought it was a, it was a, it was a right good um, manager for the club um, and as I say I think his win ratio if you look at his win ratio it was, it was good eh? just always got into the playoffs and just couldn't just, just couldn't uh, over the fashion line. 
losing out to the final day to air that season, uh, how devastating a day was that for the club? I get yet again another downer on your time or over that last two year spell with the relegation yeah. and losing out on the final day. Yeah, I think it was, as I say, it was it was a good season. Eh? Obviously, it was Barry's first uh, first year, and I obviously wanted to go straight back up. Um, it was like neck and neck the whole year with us in there. Um, I think I'm sure at one point we were seven points clear. One point they were seven points clear. I think three games to go, maybe they were seven points clear. And we had a chance. All I had to do was beat Alwa the last game of the season. It was nil nil. I just I, I remember that like the game. Eh? It was just like nothing would go in. Eh? It was just like it was any days. And I think that whole year we never we scored every single game at home except for that last game of the season. And I remember Vaughn getting a chance and maybe a couple of yards out, and he's in the last minute and he's hit the post. Just things weren't falling in. And as you say, it was quite a, obviously quite a sad moment. Obviously, I didn't think it was by the relegation season, eh? but just getting that close, it just also hurt um, a lot. But I think, obviously, I think all credit to Air as well, because obviously it was it was neck and neck the whole season, and it was a, a really good advert for League One. I think both teams were going for it. I think, obviously, Ed Shanklin at the time, and he was absolutely flying. Obviously, I think he was also the difference for his goals throughout the season. He's probably kept them. Kept in, in, in top of the table, and, as you say, wasn't it meant to be. The following season, Ray finished third in the playoffs with current manager John Morgan coming in in the September. A player I was eager, eager to ask you about, about that season was Kevin Nisbet. Um, Nisbet scored 30 goals that season for the club after being released from Patrick Thistle. Um, how important was he for that squad? And was it clear that he had the quality to go to on to play for Hibs and now recently, yesterday, Scotland? Yeah, um, as you said, I think a lot of people would have knew him. Um, I think first, I think the first moment we played against him, I think it was against the Air, maybe the season before he was on loan at Air. Yeah. And he, I think he missed an open goal for a yard out. So when he came into the club, he was like, oh, you can't be that player that missed an open goal for a yard out. You call yourself a striker. <laughs> Just like, obviously, in a bit of laugh without him, but he was, a, he was a good lad and um, I think he got himself fit. I think I was probably... Maybe a bit he's undoing un- that fitness wise. He wasn't obviously during pre season that he was also at the back of me. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> he, um, he got himself fit in that. And as you say, I think I'm sure it was like 30 goals he scored that year. Eh? And he's, yeah. the quality. he's got everything. Eh? He's got obviously goals. He holds the ball up. He can link. He's good in the air. And I think that season was probably it just brought him out and just put his name in the shop window. Eh? Um, I think he probably also thank Rafe himself for that. and also got his move to Dunfermline and that he continued to do that. Um, he's done brilliant, obviously. Congratulations and also him getting his Scotland call up and that. He fully deserves it and that. And obviously, I hope he can do well and the Euros coming up and that. What opportunity for him. Um, as you say, he's top player. Last season, you were crowned champions of League One due to obviously COVID-19 cutting the season early. Um, would you say captain this Rafe side was a highlight of your career? Uh, Sorry, was would you say captain in this Rafe side to a league title was the highlight of your career? Yeah, it's probably the probably most um, best moment in my career eh? um, to be captain at any club to go and um, win a league. Obviously, circumstances have happened. Obviously, it's not the way we wanted it to to, to happen. Also, but we can uh, change what's happened. Um, I think at the twenty two, I think it was twenty seven weeks, twenty eight weeks. We were twenty two weeks at the top of the table, so it was, it was fully deserved. Um, I thought, as I say, I've won the championship with Dundee. I've won the, the Challenge Cup with uh, Dundee. Um, got to the final Challenge Cup with Alloa and got to the final Challenge Cup with Riff, but obviously it's not been played. And then obviously win the league with Riff. Um, so as I say, there's been quite a few highs in there as well. Obviously, I've got a few lows, but that's the way football works. Eh? It's, yeah. it's up and down. It's uh, how you react to things. And also, I think last year, the manager, the style of football he plays, the players he brought in, just everything suited when in. We just it was such an enjoyable season last season. The boys in the change room, the spirit in the change room, I've not been in the change room like it. Um even this year, I think it's it's got even better. Um as you see the way we're performing uh on a weekly basis just now in the championship. And um, just shows you what how well we've been doing. But as a personal moment I to be captain of uh, any club to go and win a league, um such a big moment obviously it's been let down obviously enough able to celebrate with the fans and that but as you say I'll hopefully either middle of this year or whatever we can still celebrate also win that league and hopefully we can actually maybe go and get in her promotion you never know 
as you say, this season it's been a great season so far for the club, playing great football and scoring goals for fun. Uh, you're currently sitting second in the division. How far do you think this team can go this season? As you say, I think at the start of the season, obviously the main aim was to stay up. Obviously, that was drilled in from, from the players, the manager, obviously the board. Obviously, they want to stay in the league. They want to get some stability back in the club. Also, it was maybe three years in League One. Um, so just to get a bit of something like it's a massive club. Eh? I don't think people realise how big a club it actually is until you're actually here. The fan base and that, the things they do, 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 do in the community. Um, there's a lot of work behind the scenes in that. And as I say, it's a big club. So probably my main aim is to stay up. But I think also back in the players' minds, we had, a, had a, like a, an inkling, like, listen, we can get in this top four. Eh? There's a, there is a chance we're getting here. As you say, you take hearts away, take hearts with it. Obviously, the budget they've got. As you say, they were probably expected to win the league. But uh, is it, I think all, all our teams, I think anybody had a chance at the start of the season, they probably think they could make that top four. Um, and uh, as you say, the way the manager plays, I think anybody who watches a game and that, it's the way he plays the game, the way the way he puts through it every week, the way we get the ball down and play it. As I said, I don't think it's a better team in the championship that plays football with. Yeah, and probably and probably we'll probably play better football in the teams even in the SBL. I think that's a good one on the ball. I think on Tuesday, obviously it was on BBC, and that I think a lot of people were seeing the, the way we actually play football. And obviously that comes from the manager, comes from the assistant manager, the way they draw it into every single training session. They put sessions on, the work tirelessly every single day to make sure we're ready for each opponent we get. And now it's just about us. As I say, it's in our own hands now. Um, we've still got five league games to go. So as you say, it's about getting into that playoff position and see where it can take us. But as you say, we're hopefully we can get that second spot. As you touched upon there, uh, Tuesday's game and the 5-1 derby win. Uh, how massive was that for the season to get one of your local rivals? Yeah, I think it was massive. Um, obviously, I, th- I think or 2-0 up the first game. They came back, drew 2 it was a good game. Um, the second game, they gave away a bit of doing. Obviously, beat before one at East End. Um, so it was kind of, there was pressure on with um, going into the game. Also pressure on Dunfermline as well. They've also had a wee blip in their season. Um, but I think just shows you the quality we've got. I think there was five, six changes from the game on Saturday against Morton to come in. Also you had like Jamie Gullen, Kai Kennedy, Louis Vaughan, player Ross Matthews, um, Brad Spencer. They came back into the team for Tuesday. I think it just shows you the quality of squad we've got for these sort of players to come back into obviously a big game the way it is. I think the boys... We're absolutely outstanding on Tuesday. I think from start to finish, bar the goal, we lost. I think it was a pitch perfect performance. Um, I think we dominated from start to finish. Um, and I think obviously the plaudits we're getting through the media, through obviously what's been going on after the game, as you say, it can only give a confidence. Um, as you say, it's probably our biggest victory of the season. Uh, a player who scored on Tuesday night was Lois Vaughan. Um, He's had a nightmare with injuries over the past couple of years. How good is it to see Lewis back at full fitness scoring goals? Yeah, as I say, I, I, I've said for day one, he's in the best players I've played played with it. He's it's a shame because he would he would he would I think he could have been anywhere in the game. Eh? He, I think he would be playing for Scotland. I think he'd be playing for England. He's that good. Eh? Um, all season injuries, and as you see, I think it just shows you that, that, uh, how good mentally he is to come back for what he's been through. I don't think there's been a sportsman in the, the world who's had three cruciate ligament damage injuries. Eh? That's like probably the, the worst you can think. He's been through it three times. Um, as you say, I think the Rafe fans, the Rafe board, I need to be grateful about such a player still here because, like, I've always said, like, if he would, if a couple of years ago, I think he would have been, he would have been gone if it wasn't for his injuries. Eh? Um, he could have been anywhere. But as you say, he's still young. I'm sure he's, I'm sure he's still only 25. He's still got plenty of years in him and he's back to fitness now. I think you see on Tuesday night, he got man in the match, got two goals. So it just shows you the quality he's got. And I just think, obviously, get him back to his best. I think he just needs to take his time and just, as you say, do what's right for him and just didn't go too fast, too soon. As he needs to, he needs to just take his body and just see how, how it is and if we can get the player that we know he is and we've got a very good chance of getting promoted this year. Uh, Penultimate question, Kyle. Um, You've made over 200 appearances for the Rafe Rovers. Um, How much of an achievement is that for you personally? Yeah, um, I think, uh, we heard you say that, on on, um, Tuesday after the game, one of the the media guys, I think think there's been 2,200 players to put on a Rafe Rovers top and I'm number 59 on all the appearances there, so... It's been a great, uh, I think this is my 
come up, I think it's in my f- five and a half, it's in my six years now. So, as you say, it's been great, and obviously I've still got a contract for uh, for next year. So, as you say, plenty, hopefully, I can just get more appearances as much as I can. And as you say, being captain of the club, hopefully, I can even, you don't know what can happen this year, but we'll give it our best shot and hopefully I can, can get back to back promotions. Last question, Kyle. Um, what are your goals for the future? I think just to keep playing as, as much as I can. Eh? As you say, it's um, I really enjoy being here. Um, I think I've always said that it's, it's a really good club to be at. Um, I think the squad, the team spirit, the way the manager plays the game, I think any player would like, would, would like to be here, the way we're playing that, I'd be watching that. I think even taking Kai Kenny, for example, I think he was homesick when he was at Inverness and he wanted to come back. But I think he seen the way we played and it made him want to sing here. Also playing against him and that I made him because he see the t- type of football we play. So I must att- attract a certain player here, and as you say, it's a, it's a great place to be. And we'll see what happens in, in the future. As you say, I'm coming up to 30 now, so I've still might be in the prime of my career. So I think I've still got a, a couple of good few years left, and we can see what happens after that. Perfect, Kyle. Thanks for joining me today. No problem, mate. Appreciate it. Cheers, guys. Thanks for watching the, next, this episode of the LB View. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, guys. Hello.